Welcome to the 2022 U.S. Rowing Mid-Atlantic Youth Championships Coaches and Coxswains meeting. Um, thank you all for, for joining us today. We'll go over some, some details leading up to the regatta, um, and we're all really excited to be back in a, in a world where these events will be youth national qualifiers um, and having more teams join us without, without some restrictions there. Um, so today, we will go over a quick agenda. From the US rowing end of things, we are going to do some introductions. We'll review the registration and venue schedule, uh, review the US rowing code of conduct throughout the venue, and then finally review safe sport and go over in detail um, who needs it, where you can where you can complete the safe sport training, and then where you uh, report to US rowing of who is coming to this event. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pass it off to our chief and deputy referee for a welcome. They'll review traffic patterns, rules of rowing, um, and then finalize finishing up with unsportsmanlike conduct. Finally, we have our LOC um, and we'll go over safety and venue um, on water and land and discuss um, evacuation plans and medical aid. So if you can, if you have any questions throughout the session, please go ahead and put them in the Q&A. Um, chat is disabled so that we don't lose your questions. So put them in the Q&A and we will get back to them at the end. Um, so once again, welcome to the 2022 Mid-Atlantic Youth Championships. My name is Sarah McAuliffe. I'm the Director of Events with US Rowing. Um, and on site, you will also see my coworker, Reggie Robinson, who's our events coordinator. Um, from the LOC, we have Hillary and Chris Groot here. And for our chief and deputy referees, we have Duncan Hudson and Bruce Doak. So to go over the registration schedule, um, we will have registration open on Friday, May 13th from 12 to 6 p.m. Um, so any changes that need to be done, whether it's lineup, um, schedule questions, whatever it may be, feel free to come find um, me and my coworkers at that desk and we can do a manual process with you there. That will also include where you'll pick up bound numbers um, for both the morning sessions or for, for all sessions, um, you'll pick up bound numbers at the US Rowing Registration Desk, not at Control Commission um, for both Saturday and Sunday morning. Then Saturday will be on site and open at 6.30 a.m. till the end of racing, of course, and then same with Sunday. To go over practice, we will have practice from 3 to 6 p.m. Um, on Friday, May 13th, and the last launch will be at 5.30 p.m. And then heat sheets will be posted on here now tomorrow evening. Um, we have a final schedule that I'll post um, af right after this meeting. We're able to condense. Um, right now there's a tentative schedule up. We're able to condense the day. So Saturday does look a bit shorter, um, which is a good thing because it looks like there's potentially some uh, thunderstorms coming in. Um, so we've been able to condense, and again, I'll post that on Regatta Central um, in an Excel sheet form right after this meeting. So to go over the U.S. Rowing Code of Conduct, um, so as many of you have been to U.S. Rowing events for quite a long time now, this Code of Conduct is a new addition, and you will see it throughout the venue in forms of signage. Um, you'll also see it on our website very soon and at any uh, U.S. Rowing Regatta moving forward. Um, so I apologize, I know it's a little bit wordy, but just because this is super important, I am going to read through um, the, the titles here just so we're all on the same page. So to start off, at US Rowing, our mission is to champion participation in the passionate pursuit of excellence in rowing. To support this mission, we need to ensure rowing at all levels is fair, inclusive, competitive, and safe for all participants. Whether you're an athlete, coach, parent, vendor, staff, volunteer, or spectator at a US Rowing event, you are a member of the US Rowing community. We invite you to enjoy this experience and expect you to abide by the following code of conduct. So first thing, um, referring to safety and well-being, it's the top priority of US Rowing to safeguard the physical and emotional well-being of all of our community members. Then we come to professionalism and integrity. US Rowing expects respectful and honest, commu honest communications and behavior. Then finally, the boathouse is open to everyone. As members of the US Rowing community, it is critical that we model positive behavior and advance the inclusive and competitive culture we envision. Um, and to close out, non-compliance is not an option. So to emphasize, if a community member chooses not to follow the US Rowing code of conduct, there will be consequences. These include disqualification, dismissal from the event, exclusion from future events, legal action, and re revocation of US Rowing membership. 
please notify a U.S. rowing official um, or myself in the event of witnessing any of these, um, if disobeying any of these items. So super important, like I said, there will be signage on the venue. Um, and if you have any questions about the code of conduct, I'm happy to discuss more. Then to dive right into safe sport. Um, so as all of you know, starting last year, safe sport required uh, training for any athlete that is 18 years of age and older and required training for any um, adults participants. So a coach, support staff, whatever that may be, who has direct contact with athletes um, throughout the day-to-day -day at the boathouse and the day-to-day -day at regattas. Um, so what do I need to do? So this is gonna go over who needs what type of training. Um, so athletes only, this is athlete only training right here. This is for, if you are an athlete and you are 18 years of age or older, you need to go into safe sport um, through the US Rowing website and using your member number, and you need to complete the 30 minute athlete only training. So again, you don't need to go ahead and do the 90 minutes. There's just 30 minutes there for the athletes. Um, but to emphasize any athlete that's 18 years of age and older does have to do this. When you get on site to the registration desk, we'll be able to say, hey coach, this many athletes um, is not, they're not compliant due to safe sport. And we will withhold those wristbands um, before they're allowed on the docks there. So please make sure that everybody is compliant prior to. Then we go to the authority and direct contact. So any coach, any support staff, any um, team parent who works with the team on a regular basis um, needs the 90 minute NGB one core training. Once you complete that for the first year, um, again, it's 90 minutes one time, and then you go to the annual refresher course. So for the next three years, it's a 30 minute training. If you are a coach, again, we'll double check um, to make sure you're compliant here, and then you will not be able to receive the wristband if you're not compliant um, on this end. And then finally, we have no direct contact. So what this looks like is if you're a spectator, if you're a volunteer, um, if you are a, a food tent parent, whatever, a booster's parent, you need to be map aware. Um, there is a document on our website that goes over what map aware is, and there will also be signage on the venue in yard signs um, that basically says, if you see something, you need to report it. So there's no specific training there, but you just need to make yourself familiar um, with the signage on the venue. Then finally, how do I comply? Um, so right now, when an athlete registered, or when you register an athlete for the regatta, um, there is a compliance report that is filled out. As all of you know, that shows if somebody is membership compliant, if they have their waiver or do not have their waiver. And then US Rowing sends out, or I'm sorry, Regatta Central sends out automated messages starting nine days out from the regatta. And then every day after that, if something changes, that compliance report now includes the safe sport portion too. So in an email that you receive from Regatta Central, um, it will say this athlete is not compliant for, um, does not have a, a basic plus regatta package membership or championship or whatever the compliance requirement is for the membership level. Or it may say this athlete is not compliant due to safe sport. So that will live on the compliance form that we've already um, all been familiar with. If you are a coach and support staff and you're attending this regatta, and again, I want to clarify, a support staff is not a booster's tent, food tent parent. So those people do not need to fill it out. What we're looking at more here are coaches, assistant coaches, um, riggers who are going to be at the trailer for, for the entirety of the regatta, um, and any other like chaperone that's traveling with the team, going to be at the trailer area working with the team, um, and might need access to the docks to help carry oars down or whatever it may be. So to go on and make sure that your support staff and coaches are filled out and ready to go, um, you need to log into Regatta Central. On the left-hand side, you can't see it on this screenshot, but on the left-hand side, it's going to say registration form. And then about three items down, it will say safe sport. You'll click on the word safe sport. And then this, this screen will pop up. You're going to select your club up here, and then you'll be able to pull your athletes, um, or I'm sorry, pull your coaching staff and any other support staff from your roster. If there is somebody who needs access um, to that athlete limited areas and they are not a coach or an assistant coach and do not have a US Rowing membership, we do now have a free volunteer membership. 
And that person can go into Regatta Central, purchase um, the free or sign up for the free membership. And then their name will automatically pop up on this, this coaches and support staff, staff list right here. And that gives them access to uh, uh, safe sport training for free. So many ways to do it. Again, if you're a coach or support staff, you do need to have that membership. But if you're somebody who's just working for this regatta in a different role, there is a free membership option that gets you the safe sport training for free. I'm going to go ahead and stop there and I'm going to hand it over to our chief referee, Duncan Hudson. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, I'm Duncan. I'll be the chief for this regatta. On the call, we also have uh, Bruce Doak. He's the uh, deputy chief. And I believe we have a couple of the referees uh, that will be helping out this week and also on the call. Uh, in all, we have uh, 25 referees from the Mid-Atlantic, Northeast, uh, Southeast, and Central regions, a little over 135 years of expertise. It's a really good group of people. Um, we're here for everybody's safety and fairness. And to that point, if at any time during the regatta, if you have any kind of issue, you see something that's unsafe, you think you're treated unfairly on the course, see somebody in blue, let them know, and we'll, we, will get, we will resolve the problem for you as best we can. Um, now I'm gonna turn over to, uh, to Chris and Hillary, the LOC, and they're gonna talk briefly about the traffic patterns on the course. On behalf of the LOC and Hillary and myself, we want to thank, welcome everybody to the Mercer Lake for the Mid-Atlantic Junior Championship. Uh, we look forward to seeing you. Most of you will put your boats in the boat storage area, which is, could we go to the, the practice first? Um, which you'll see in the bottom center of this diagram. There are four docks there. The two on the left-hand side, as you look towards the water, are the launch ones. Launch off of those, go out to the course. Um, and if you want to uh, just go practice on the course, you can enter the course once you get parallel to the course there. Don't go straight out to the course and then turn on the course where you're going to block other boats, but turn before and then you can merge onto the course. If you do want to practice the um, do a warm up loop around the warm up lane, stay close to shore. Uh, and then once you get into the wider area of the lake up there, you can go over and go around the warm up line. The warm up line is delineated by two very large yellow buoys at either end. And then there are two orange boys in the middle. The sections of the warm-up line, there's a 300 meter section, um, the longer one there, which is closer to the finish line, and then the one closer to the starter start is another 200 meters. So it's 500 meters with a 30 meter gap in the middle for the whole warm-up line. You'll see the shaded hashed area in all of these traffic patterns. Please do not go over into that area. The race officials will be not be watching that or checking that. They, if you're over that area, they will not go and chase you down for your event. Please stay close to the warm-up lane um, line and go around that in a clockwise direction. When you want to merge onto the course, do it at the start. Um, go come out into the start, and for the traffic pattern practice pattern. Uh, pa Traffic, practice traffic pattern, lanes one through three, which are the furthest from the, the launch and boat storage, are from the start towards the finish line. Lanes five, six, and seven are from the finish towards the start. And lane four in the middle is a dead lane. If you are being overtaken for any reason, move to the outside, let the faster boats go by and then come back in. Uh, if you're from the Casperson Rowing Center, you launch, head towards the finish line, and then join the traffic pattern. This is the opposite of your normal pattern, but if you're from Casperson, um, please follow this one for the, the, the practice. Moving next to the time trial, once again, you will launch, you will turn, and then go up alongside of the course to where the lake, lake opens up and then go over and go around the warm-up line in a clockwise direction. Do not go over to the other side all the way across the lake there. Um, and then when you are ready to 
So when it's time for your race to start, for your time trial to start, please go up to the start line um, and wait and the race officials, referees will bring you onto the course. We will be using tentatively two lanes. Um, the officials at the start will be telling you which lanes we're gonna be using based on the weather conditions. Um, and even lanes, even bow numbers will be in one lane, odd bow numbers will be in the other lane. If you are being overtaken by a crew that started behind you, please move to the outside, let the faster crew go by and then come back into the lane. The timing will start when the buoys at the 100 meter mark and that's where the buoys change from red to yellow. The first 100 meters are all in red buoys space five meters apart, then they go to yellow buoys. There's a small red buoy in the lane line at each 250 meters. And then at each 500 meters, there's the red buoy in the lane, plus two orange buoys on the outside of the course. And then the last 250 meters is all in red buoys. There are some big orange buoys which are approximately 20 meters beyond the finish line. So if you hit those, you're already past the finish line. The race um, for normal racing is about the same. Uh, launch, go up um, along the course, go into the traffic pattern, the warm up, And then um, when you're called for your race, you'll go onto the course and race. When you finish, for both the time trial and for the, the normal racing, sprint racing, um, you will go into a clockwise direction if you want to cool down there. If you don't want to cool, go past the orange buoys, turn, and then come up alongside the, uh, the course there. Um, and I think, uh, Duncan, you're going to go into not stopping at the finish line and all of that. There are a couple of things, coxswains and rowers, to watch out for after you finish. One is the finish line. It's very narrow there. You can easily get by, but uh, don't come out onto the course because there may be another race or more competitors coming down as part of the race. Um, the shore you'll see kind of moves away from the course. So if you follow the shore, you're going to be moving away from the course and then that peninsula and the marina will jump up and surprise you and you don't want to be surprised by that. Right at the peninsula coming out, it's very narrow there. So single file around that. Okay, I guess we're on the next slide. Next slide, sir. Can you see, I have US rowing rules of rowing Hudson up or Duncan up. So the, um, it is your responsibility uh, as a crew to understand, know and understand all of the rules of rowing. Um, specifically, at control, we will be looking for uh, bow balls and heel straps. You've all been through control multiple times, many times this spring and, and throughout your career. Uh, we do not want any boats arriving at the uh, at control launch dock um, with the shoes not tied down properly, the Shimano shoes being the exception. Um, we will not have slings available for you at the launch dock. If the control, the referee at control sees that your shoes are not tied down, you're missing a bow ball, we're going to ask you to step out of the line, hold your boat, and, and deal with it on your own while we process other boats. Um, most importantly, more as important as all that, when you get to control and to launch, we expect you to have your bow number, know which race you're in, and to tell the referee at control who you are and, and where you belong um, race-wise. Um, once you've launched, if there's any kind of problem with your equipment, uh, let a person, in, a referee in blue, know as soon as possible, and we will do everything we can to, to help you to get you to race. It is a very um, busy schedule, especially on Saturday. So we can't guarantee that you will be able to race based upon your uh, breakage but we will do everything we can to, to help you get there. And the sooner you let us know there's a problem, then the uh, sooner we can, we can fix it or try to fix it and get you racing. Right. Okay. On the water, um, there will be marshals out there bringing you into the uh, practice area and bringing you into the start. 
um, and dealing with you at the finish. They will be giving you instructions, um, probably via a megaphone. We need some kind of confirmation from you that you have heard the, the official's instructions. We expect a hand from a coxswain or from the bow seat. If we don't get that kind of response, we're going to keep nagging you until we get it. Um, so please let us know right away and we can make things work properly. Um, you need to be, if, if, if a race is in progress, um, you may not cross the course and, unless, a ref, unless a referee tells you to do that. That's especially important for the boats coming up from uh, Casperson. There's going to be a crossing marshal that you have to wait and um, they will tell you when to, to go across. Saturday is especially important with the time trials. Um, very little time to cross between races, but we will get you all across. So you need to be there, wait, and, and listen to the, the official. Um, when you get to the finish line, don't stop on the finish line. Row right through. If you sit there and wait, you block the camera, um, you're going to affect time for the next race. Uh, you might cause somebody else to you know, have to alter their course finishing, so please row right through. Um, failure to get out of that way will be an interference call, and you, you could be penalized for that. Um, on your way to the start, or returning after your race. Please, no power strokes, um, start sequences right next to a, a passing race. When a, a race approaches you, let it run, let, just glide by, uh, give them the same courtesy that you would expect um, when you're racing. Warm-ups, as Chris said, uh, follow the pattern. If you go into the wider part of the lake, um, most likely we will not come and get you. We just don't have time with as many boats to go chasing people all over the place. So please circle the, the buoys, the practice buoys, and be ready for your race. Um, time trial starts. We will. There will be. Uh, Marshals or referees on the start platform, they will call you in in bow number order. Um, even number, odd number boats will be in race in lane number three. Odd, even number boats will be in lane, lane number four. We will alternate starts uh, every 30 seconds. Uh, a boat will go off in each lane. Uh, you will have 100 meters to get up to speed. When you get to that 100 meter mark, you will hear the referee on the shore with a ready, ready go as you cross the line and then you are on the course. Please do not stop at the line and, and wait for a go. You're just costing yourself time. So be full speed, full pressure when you get there. Um, what else? Uh, ba, ba, ba. So if you are being overtaken, I apologize. You need to uh, yield to the outside. If a boat comes within one boat length of you, yield to the outside. Lane number three will go to uh, lane number two. Lane number four will go to lane number five. Let the boat pass as it is going back by you. Failure to yield again uh, will be a penalty, uh, which could go as far as uh, exclusion. Breakage. If you leave the start, either for during the, the start area, the first 100 meters, either in the time trials or the, the sprints, um, you have accepted the finish, it's the start. Um, you, you cannot get to the finish and put up your hand and say something wasn't fair at the start. Um, you must let us know within that first 100 meters. If not, um, it's a fair race as far as we're concerned. Uh, we will have referees staggered along the course. They will be watching for interference, um, failure to yield. They will be looking for safety. Uh, if somebody goes in the water, we'll be there in a second to get you out all those things. Um, if you get to the finish, you don't think the race is fair for any reason, please raise your hand. One person in the boat raised their hand, call over the finish marshal, explain to them what has happened. Um, let us know how you've been impacted, what you think should happen, and uh, we, will, we will work with you and try to resolve the issue. Right. Next slide. All right, sprint starts. You get, um, once you direct it, you, you just, we're in the same, here we go, there we go. 
You come into the starting platform and starting platform when called by the starter, not before. You will come in in numerical order, means one through six. You need to lock onto your um, onto your stake boat within two minutes of the start. Failure to lock on within two minutes will be a late start penalty. Um, assuming there is time when you've gone into your lane, the starter may allow you to practice within your lane. Please, if you are practicing or if you're when you're entering, don't go halfway down the course. Keep it as close as possible to the stake boats so that minimize the amount of room that you need to back into and to lock on. Um, in typical fashion, we will not recognize hands at the start. We can see, clearly see alignment from, or not alignment, but points from the uh, starting platform. So you don't need to try to tell us that you're, you're not pointed properly. We're, we're aware of it and we will not start the race until you are. Um, it will be a standard start. We will pull the cruise and then we will say attention. Red, red light will go on. There will be a horn and that will be sit in a green light and that will mean go. Um, if weather gets bad or we're having problems getting people staying on the stake boats, we could go to a quick start. We will let you know if that happens. The uh, starting sequence in that case will be where there will be no polling and it will be quick start, attention, red light, go horn in green. Um, During sprint racing, we'll be having two, re two referees follow each race. Uh, one, the low side referee will be uh, lanes four, five, and six. High side, or well, for high, well, I guess we'll at Merce will be four, five, six. Low side will be one, two, three. They will follow you down the course and they will use white flags to direct you should you venture out of your lane. They will call your name, raise the flag, and point in the direction that you need to go to correct your your uh, travel. When you get to the finish, an orange flag will be displayed on the beach. A horn will be sounded for each boat that goes across and the flag will dip and then rise as each boat goes across the finish line. If, again, if you have any issues at the finish, raise your hand, the referee will come to you, ask you what happened, how you've been impacted and what resolution you're seeking. You must let the referee know before they display the white flag to the finish line. Once they display it to the finish line, the race is official. If the conversation with you, have, you have with the referee at the finish, if you cannot resolve the issue as you see fit, uh, let the referee know that you're not happy with the uh, outcome and you can file a protest. Once you get on land, it requires a $50 fee and there will be forms uh, at the finish dock or the recovery dock that you can complete and get to us within one hour of your of your docking and then we will have a uh, a lovely protest session to uh, to resolve the problem okay unsportsmanlike conduct hopefully this doesn't happen um one of the most common issues uh in unsportsmanlike con uh conduct is is profanity and it is, is it cannot be tolerated um and that means we, we don't want to hear profanity whether it's a motivational uh, in your sense or you know disparaging um please do not use it uh in the event that you do use it 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 could be uh considered grounds for ex exclusion so just speak nicely to each other when you're out there all right. All right. And I think we're talking safety on the venue now. And that goes over to Chris. Let me get off mute. Um, there will be a medical um, first aid EMTs are located during, next to the marina boat ramp. Um, it's halfway between where the boat storage area is and the finish line, and it's a very convenient location. So if, if there is any medical emergency, somebody gets hurt on land, um, 
you can bring somebody there. If they are unable to move, find the nearest official. They will radio the EMTs. The EMTs will report to any place they have uh, vehicles that they can get to any place on, on the venue. If there's a medical emergency on the water, get the attention of one of the referees and they will bring you to the marina bill that marina um, and they will deal with you right there and uh, they will have ambulance if that's needed. Hopefully we won't need that, um, but that's where the medical is. Um, evacuation. In the case that we have evacuation, most likely it will be weather. Uh, the first thing that will happen is there will be a decision that we need to stop all boats from launching. And then if it is determined that we need to bring boats back in off the water, all of the docks will become inbound or receiving um, docks. So we will turn all of the docks, even the launch ones, into boat docks where people can come in. Um, and it's essential that if you see an official that's waving a red flag and telling you to go in, that you head in immediately, that means that there is something going on. Um, also, it's important if we do have a thunderstorm come in, don't have team meetings near the boat trailer. Um, boats and the trailers are huge lightning detectors or lightning uh, um, attractors get everybody into vehicles um, and out off of the fields uh, away from the boats um, and um, get them to safety. Hillary, do you want to? Uh, sure. Um, do you want to just do the slide on tents really quick? Is I think it's right before this one. So just a quick note on spectator parking and team tents. We do have um, spectator parking, if you've been to the venue, you're probably familiar with it in the big grass field, $10 per day. You can prepay for parking passes on our website. Um, and this is for spectators only, not for, not for team vehicles. Uh, all teams, if you have, if you're planning on bringing a tent, a team tent, a parent tent, uh, you must register for a tent spot and you in the finish line area, and you can reserve up to two tent spots. Each tent spot is 10 by 20. So if you get one tent spot, you will have 10 by 20. And if you reserve two, it's basically a 20 by 20 space. It's not two separate um, spaces. It's one 20 by 20 spot. So uh, as of right before this meeting, there were 25 teams who had registered for tents. If and I think there are 65 teams registered for the event. So if you have not registered for a team tent and you plan on having your parent group have a tent at the at the venue, you do need to register for that. And it's it's um, on the PNRA the Row PNRA website, which I listed here. You have to scroll down to the bottom to to see the tent reservation. It's not on Regatta Central for the um, Mid-Atlantics where you registered your teams for entries. So please be sure that you do that before you arrive. Um, we will be monitoring for that. Um, and this is just a map of the venue, just to give, if you haven't, if you're not familiar with it, um, the main park road is Paxson Avenue. So everything will be off of Paxson Avenue in the Mercer County Park. The green area, that's where the boat trailers are stored. And the parking, the paved parking lot right next to it is where tow vehicles uh, may park. And when you drop off your trailer, you need to unhitch and, uh, and then not drive in and out of the field. You need to unhitch and then park your, your tow vehicle in that parking lot. And then obviously when you're ready to leave, you can hitch up again and, and take your trailer out the, the brown shaded area is spectator parking. That is a big grass field. Um, and that's the $10 a day. You can see where chuck wagons can park um, on the left-hand side of the gravel path leading down to the finish line area. Handicap parking is on the right-hand side of that. Uh, vendors and team tents and spectator area is all down right on the water uh, to the left of the finish tower. Um, there will be team vans, so team vehicle parking uh, to the left in West Picnic parking. It's called West Picnic. Um, that's, that's to the left of the boat storage area where it says team van parking and a picnic table. 
there is parking there for team team vehicles. Um, if that fills up, which I hope it won't, but if it does, and you are clearly a team vehicle, a team van, uh, you you can park in spectator parking. Please tell the the volunteers that you are with a team. Um, if it's a if it's a, a regular car or vehicle, you will likely need to pay to park in the spectator area. Uh, I think that's about it. There is a water fill uh, area, a water fill station at the playground. Um, so if you need to fill up water bottles or fill up water jugs, you can you can do that at that playground area. And you can pre-purchase the parking tickets for the spectator parking online at the same PNR, Row PNRA website that Hillary gave you. Great, thank you. Uh, there are a few questions in here. I'm gonna run through them. Um, so this, this presentation, both the recording of this and the PowerPoint will be um, downloaded to Regatta Central. We'll post that tomorrow. Uh, please do send that out to all of your coxswains, um, athletes, and any spectator that will be in attendance there. So this will be posted. Um, some questions regarding safe sports. So when I log into my Regatta Central account into the registration form, I do not have a safe sport link. So just to clarify, on the left-hand side of Regatta Central, there are all of the tabs. It says registration form is the heading of one of the tabs. And right below that, it says safe sport. So it's just one of the tabs on your left-hand side. So that includes like entries, directions, all of that. Um, it says just the word safe sport there. Um, if you can't find that, we would be happy to walk you through it. I'll also say too, um, there are it is not a flawless system in the sense of what safe sport, the organization of safe sport is picking up with training. In some scenarios, an athlete did not use their US rowing member number and just went straight to the safe sport website. And if that is the case, our system does not pick up that the athlete is compliant. In a scenario like that, please uh, email members at usrowing.org. They can go ahead, email safe sport, merge that account, and you will show up compliant on race day. Sarah, just to clarify, on Regatta Central, it's when you're in the Mid-Atlantic Regatta screens that it appears, not in your club login. Correct. Yep. So it's it's on the this Regatta specific um, overview page. Thanks, Chris. Awesome. Um, we have a question, Duncan. I'll direct this to you. Breakage in a time trial applies to the first hundred meters after the start. No, I'm sorry if that wasn't clear. So in the time trial, the breakage will be uh, the hundred meters that is the start shoot. So you need to stop before you actually cross that line. Let us know that there's, there's breakage, and we'll get you out of the queue and attempt to resolve it. Great, thank you. Um, this is a two part. Is there a storm plan for Saturday? I will. Um, of course, we've gone over like the evacuation plans. So assuming this is more directed for the event schedule, um, we have condensed it quite a bit or as much as we possibly can right now, um, even working with some of the, the lunch break. So assuming that there might be some afternoon thunderstorms, um, we will stick with that currently. Um, if there is weather, I strongly, strongly suggest to go back into the regatta packet and review the inclement weather plan and in, in what case, um, what round of events we take if weather does kick us out of, of racing for a morning and afternoon or a full day. Um, we just came off of Central's and Southwest this past weekend and just got back. Both events had cancellations due to very, very high winds. Um, and in both events, we had to go back to the last completed round within the progression. Um, so there's multiple points. There's about six points within that inclement weather plan. Please familiarize yourself with that as we will follow that. And both medals and youth national bids would be awarded based off of that plan there. So thank you for, for asking that question there. Um, Hillary, for you, is there coach parking? We have several coaches coming from different places. Um, well, the, the first option really would be the, the West Picnic area. Um, there, you, you, can, you can likely go to the spectator parking area and say that you are a coach, but I would first go to the West Picnic area um, 
first and and see if you can get in there. Awesome. And one more. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. When is the earliest trailers can arrive? Oh, earliest. Well, noon on Friday is the um, official earliest time. If you need something earlier, please email me. My email's up on the screen right there and we can make arrangements if possible. Great. It looks like that is all the questions right now. Um, oh, one, one question, are there cocks and weigh-ins? No, for all use, uh, US rowing youth events, there are no weigh-ins, no, obviously lightweight weigh-ins, no cocks and weigh-ins. So that will not be happening at any uh, youth qualifier, US rowing owned youth qualifier and at the youth national level. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, Please let us know if you have any questions and otherwise we will look forward to seeing you this Friday.